This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting episode of Atlas. Today I'm going to show you how to build the armored sloop that you see behind me. Let's get to it. Okay, so I have the shell of the sloop created, the bones of it, whatever you want to call it, and a small deck on it. That's it. That's all we've gotten so far. We do not have any planks on it. As you can see, do not put any planks on it. That's going to be the very very last thing you do we're gonna start off with a half wall and we're gonna place that on the back like that and then we're going to take a ceiling you're gonna hit Q till it drops down like that and then you're good to go there then you're gonna jump down there and you're gonna place two more ceilings like that okay now at this point you are going to go back to the wall you're going to grab a another half wall and this is going to seem a little weird at first, but why we are doing it will make sense towards the end. So you're going to do that with your half wall. And now you are going to take a full wall and you are going to get the doorway and you're going to place it like that. And then you're going to take the wall and you're going to go to a wall left slope like that. And then you're going to hit T again. You're going to do the right side like that. Okay, now you're going to take the slope roof, so or the, the wood roof slope structure, and you're going to place that along the sides like that. So we're going to place it to right there, and then the same thing on this side, and then we're going to jump through over here, and we're going to go down the side of the ship. We're going to go to there, and then we're going to do the same thing on this side. Oh, hopefully it, it places right for you. So let's jump down here and see if we can get that to place right. So we'll just do that and that. Now you're going to grab a ceiling piece and you're going to transform that to the doorway. And then you are going to take a ladder and you're going to get the ladder to snap like that. Just hit Q a couple times till you get it to snap like that. Now you can continue to put the rest of your floor on. The reason we do that is because if you put the floor on first, that ladder will give you a collision error. So just do it that way. That way you don't have to deal with the collision error. Okay, so now from this point, we can continue to build out the rest of this. So we're gonna go to, is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. So then we're going to transform to the triangle roof. And do that so you get that okay and now we're gonna go to the back and we're gonna do the same thing on the back so we're gonna take the uh, roof piece we're gonna transform it to the triangle and however the back we're gonna completely fill the back end so just hit Q until that happens and there you go now the back is completely filled in and the front we want to leave open and we'll talk about why because there's a few different things you can do with that once we complete the build uh, you can seal that in as well but we're going to hold off on that okay so once you've done all of that now you are going to take your wall pieces and i like to place one there one there and then we're going to take a half wall we're going to place that there let's uh that's gonna bug me so let's pick that up and let's place that that way okay so now we're going to take a ceiling piece and we're going to place it there and then we are going to i don't know why i'm having issues jumping we're going to place a ceiling piece like that and then we are going to place another ceiling piece there and then our last ceiling piece there now we're going to go back to the sloped roof and go to the half stairs, place a half stairs there, place a half stairs there. Okay, so now you can crouch and you can just come up through it that way. All right, now let's go ahead and continue to place the rest of our roof on the top. Now it's sealed in and it looks awesome. We can go ahead and we can drop through here and place our doors. So we can just place a door there and place a door there. And now we're going to put on the secondary later. So you're going to go to your wall piece. You're going to go to half wall and we're going to come right to here and we're going to place one there and we're going to place one there. Now we're going to go back to our roof piece and we're going to snap it like that. And we're just going to go down the side 
And we're going to do the exact same thing we did on that first layer. So we're just going to go down the side like so. And then we're going to hit T until we get to the triangle roof. And then that will snap right around and allow you to seal in the back with a secondary layer. Okay, and we're going to come to the front now and we're going to do the same thing. So with this one though, nope, that's not the one we wanted. We're not going to go all the way in just yet. So we're going to go to the roof. We're going to do that. Now we can bring it in again, but we're not going to do that just yet. Cause if we do that, it'll cause some collision errors. If you want to put a cannon here. Okay. So once you've done all of that, we are going to go in and place our sail. That is the right sail, right? Yeah. Medium speed sail. So you can use a handling sail if you want medium speed sail, whatever you want to use, but you're going to have to use a medium and you only get one. So we're going to place that right there because as you can see, it doesn't want to snap any place else. So we're going to snap that right there. Then we're going to put our ship's steering wheel right there like that. And now you are at the point where you are going to have to make some decisions. So do you want this to be basically a shotgun sloop to where you just run up and you want off a couple of shots and then you zoom away or do you want to be a full tank? So let's talk about your different shotgun options first. So I have a cannon here. I have the ship cannon, just the base cannon. And what I like to do, you can squeeze two of them in the front of this. So if we take, we put it as close to the side here as we can go and then angle it a little bit in. We can get another one here and do this and you can do them like that. But the downside is there. If you take a lot of damage towards the front, you end up losing both of them at the same time. So let's pick that up. What I like to do is I like to put one like this and then I like to put the other one up here. As you can see, we can place another one right above it. So this one sets back a little bit further so that this one can take the brunt of the damage. If you end up losing this one, you, you will most of the time keep this one because if you get too close and you're firing explosive rounds, you can blow a good chunk of this front off. Now your ship can take a ridiculous beating, so it won't sink your ship, but you'll lose like cannon and, and armor pieces on the front. So this is the setup I like to do, but it's completely optional and up to you. So let's pick these up. Okay. So your other option is a large cannon. Now with this one, if you want to mount two, you have to push them pretty far in front. So, and you also have to get it pretty far in front, even if you only want to do one, otherwise the, uh, the wall or the ceiling piece here will interfere with you and you won't be able to mount it. So we're going to the push it as far forward as we can allowing it to still be covered by the armor. So there it should still be covered by the armor. So you can double check that. And this is part of the reason we did not place this yet. Okay. Yeah. So there it is. It's still covered nicely and double check it to make sure you can mount it and we can. So that's good. Now you can fit another one up here, but it gets very, very janky if you do that. So if we get right in here, like, so you can see, I just had it. You kind of have to to play with it a little bit. Let's see if I can get it to do it. There it is. So just push it forward a little bit. Now you want to rotate it like that. And then we should be able to mount that one. But when you do, it kind of gets you stuck in the, the sails, as you can see there. So we'll pop out of that. And then let's double check to make sure we can still mount this one. And we can. Okay. But then when we unmount it, we're like, crouch down under the floor. It's a little, it's a little janky if you do two, but you can put two on the front of it. And if you do that and you put a crew on there and you have your crew attack, it takes two shots to take out a panel, uh, or a planks, I should say a set of planks. So you can do that. And basically one shot, well, double shot, but with one fire command, take out a, a set of, or a plank, on the side of another ship. So, I mean, they do a ton of damage, but that's an option for you. Like I said, it's a little janky. Now you can level this up and do something like put multiple cannons on top, but 
you would have to level up crew and spend time leveling it up. And we're not talking about any of that. I know that's a thing. I just want to point out that I know that that's a thing. You can put more cannons on here. We're going to focus on the two cannons, basically shotgun style. If you don't want to do that, your other option is, is to completely armor this thing up. And that is an option too. You can turn this into a crazy, just full on tank machine and outrun pretty much anything and take insane amounts of damage. So if you want to do that, you can do that pretty easily here. So what you can do is you can get rid of this plank right here because you don't need that. That's for cannons and mounting cannons. And then we can go to the sloped roof here and go to the triangle roof, fill this in. So now we can place that and we can place that and you are crazy armored right now. We can place this on the front to completely seal it in. And now you have basically a full on tank. Once you do that, you don't need this. This is for cannons. So we can go ahead and remove all of this. And then you can have this set up here with all this extra room here to build whatever you want on. You have your secure area back here, which you would build your ship chest right at the back. So you would place your ship chest right there like that. And then you place your bed right in front of that. So we place our bed. There it is. Place the bed like that. And then you can go ahead and put your planks on and you have your underneath part here, which you can crawl around. So let's go ahead and let's finish this up and we'll, we'll take a look at uh, how much damage this thing can soak up. So we'll go ahead, place around here, just go ahead and fill in all of those planks. There we go. And now we can get down here and crawl around. So you have other secure area here where you can place other stuff, storage box, smithy, whatever you want to place. Uh, you have room here around these edges in which you can place storage boxes and then all in here, which you could place storage boxes. Uh, and then we're going to climb back up to the top, put this down. We're going to release it. So we're at the full on tank build here. This, this build that I'm showing you here, this style is just made for getting around and being able to take damage and outrunning other ships. Now we're going to go hunt down a ghost ship. And I'm just going to let it beat on me for a bit to show you what kind of damage these can take from a ghost ship. Then we're going to pull this thing in to the uh, bay over there. And I'm going to show you what kind of damage it can take from different types of cannons and different types of ammo. All right, here we go. We got a ship at the damned up here and I'm just going to run straight into him. And then I'm, I have a cheat on right now that gives me the ability to travel without worrying about the wind. And it also makes me invisible to them, but I'm going to run into him and then I'm just going to turn that off and uh, we're just going to let him pummel us and you'll get to see how much of a beating this thing can actually take. It's, it's honestly, it's freaking crazy. You have two layers that they have to get through essentially before they even begin to damage your ship paneling and it's crazy how much damage you can take. I'm not even sure what level this guy is. What level is he? 12? All right, great. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to turn off the command for travel. All right. And we're just going to run right into him. All right. We got his aggro here. So I'm just going to stop and just let him start hammering at us. So there we go. And we're going to jump down here and I'll, I'll let you take a look at the paneling while he's doing that. So there's the panels. You can see that the panels have taken no damage, none at all. It's crazy. Now those have, but the, um, all oh, that, that wood paneling finally took a little bit, a little bit there. Not too bad. We must have lost a little bit up top. Let's, let's double check. Yeah. So we're starting to lose some paneling. You can see we're, we're taking tons, tons of damage. If we're moving actually like running from this guy, you're going to take very, very little damage before anything actually happens. So let's go ahead and we'll do full sales. So I'm recording this voiceover after doing this whole video because I wanted to point out something. I'm going to talk later about them hitting the edge of the water and the capability of them to do that when you've stopped. 
And you can see in this uh, freeze frame right here, the damage and where the explosion is coming from, it's right at the edge of the water. And that is the reason that our planks are taking damage. It's a little bit harder for it to do that when you are moving, because when you're moving, it aims for your center mass. Unlike here where I've stopped, which I'm pretty sure it switched AI and now the AI is trying to just sink the ship as quickly as possible. When you're moving, I think the situation is, is what it's doing is adjusting for your movement. So in order to do that, it aims for your center mass so that when you continue to move in the direction that you're doing, the cannonball will hit the side of your ship. Now that's a level 12 versus a sloop. And I essentially just stopped and let him beat the crap out of us, right? And he's still hammering us. Tons of damage coming in. Oh, missing there. So now we're just going to head off this way. And then we're going to take a look and see what kind of damage he did. So you can see here, this plank took a little bit of damage. That one took a little bit of damage. Still has a, well, that one doesn't have much health left. These have a good chunk of health left. Good chunk of health. We lost this side here. But that was taking the brunt of the damage. Let's go down below, take a look at our plank situation here. So that plank took a little bit of damage there. So did that one. He started to get through with some of it. That one has taken none. All of these have taken none. No damage over here. A little bit of damage there. Now, essentially, in order to damage this, they have to shoot below the wood roof. So we got a little bit of damage with that plank there. Not too bad, not too bad. Nothing you can't repair relatively easy. Let's go look at the back here. A little bit of damage there. Not too terrible, not too terrible. So the situation with this is, is we were like right up on him. We were basically taking the full, full hits and the way they fire, some of those hits land right below the ship. So to damage the planks, they have to essentially shoot right here at the water's edge. They got to aim down and then manage to hit your ship. Now, that's pretty hard to do when you're moving. It was easy for him to do because I was setting still. If you're moving, it's a lot more difficult to to hit right right below these roof pieces because you can see this thing is awfully close to the water's edge with that armor plating. All right, so let's repair this thing and I'm just gonna repair this one side here and we're gonna shoot at it with a couple different ammo types and I want you to see what happens. Okay, we got it pretty much all repaired up. Now we're going to fire at it with a couple different uh, cannons here. So we're going to use the large cannon. Should be able to clip the end there. Yep, there we go. So we're going to just fire right at it right there. All right, so there was one large cannonball. Still not through it, let's fire another one. Now you can see we pretty much almost took out that, that first chunk of armor there. So we're gonna fire right there, see if we can take them both out. There's two. Now the first one's gone, but the second one is still there. Let's take a look and see if we actually damage the plank below it. As you can see, the plank below it has taken no damage. Okay, so now we're gonna use a smaller cannon and I'm actually going to fire an explosive barrel at it because you can get an idea of the kind of damage the smaller cannonballs will do based on the amount of damage the large one was doing. I wanna show you something that you know would sink this in pretty much one go if it did not have any armor plating on it. So we're going to attempt to fire a barrel at it here. There you go. So full barrel shot did not sink in. Now we hit right on the side. See the kind of damage that the planks took there? The uh, the armor absorbed a majority of that. So yeah, it can take one heck of a beating. Now I'm sure you wanna see what kind of damage it can put out if you decide to use the shotgun style and actually put cannons in the front of this thing. So we're gonna take a look at that. Okay, so I have a brig here and I have the large cannons on here. I have issues with the large cannons, so 
Uh, we're just going to do the test like this and I'm damaging my own ship. So your damage mileage may vary. I don't know if there's a reduction for damaging your own structures. And before you jump down in the comments and are like, that's not practical use, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I understand that, but it's not really practical because this is kind of a kamikaze situation with the large cannons on there. You're going to plow into the opponent's ship. And if it's a larger ship because of the weight clash, you're not going to deal as much damage. But if you fire both of these off into the front of it, uh, you're going to do a massive amount of damage, but I'm having issues getting this to actually damage my ship. Yeah, as you see there, the cannonballs for the large cannonballs just went straight through it. So essentially what you would do is just ram this into the front of their ship and then fire. So full sails ahead, smash into the front of it right when you're up to it like this and then fire like so and then hit it and then you would take off going because your ship can take the full brunt of that damage without any issues because it's armored. And then apparently we're stuck and can't even uh, get out of it now. Or you can just completely screw with them like this and get locked into a situation where you're just pushing them around and they can't even do anything while your other larger ships are blowing the crap of the, out of them. Here's the ship of the damned up there I just saw. So we're going to sail over there to that one and I'm going to attempt to shoot at it with both of these cannons so you can actually see the damage that this puts out. All right, here we go. We're sailing straight at him. We're going to fire. There, look at that damage. Freaking crazy. Now they're going to reload and we're going to crash into him. Now we would be taking a ton of fire at this point, but I got the wind cheat on, so we're not actually taking damage. Um, we would take on a ton of fire. Now the situation with these are you always have to be pointed at them because these large cannons don't actually rotate. So it's much harder to hit, which is one of the reasons I don't like them. They do a ton of damage, but they're much harder to deal with. Then we can fire again. As you can see, they don't want to fire because we're not lined up properly. Let's try to rotate a little. Fire now. Fire now. Nope. Nope. Yeah. So it's up to you if you want to use those. I don't really like those. So I highly advise not using them. Using the other cannons gives you a much more options. So let's take a look at some of those options because I feel like they're much better suited to this type situation. Okay. So one of the things I like to do with these is use the explosive barrels because you get a basically a two off like crazy hard hitting shot. So in order to do that with the crew though, it's kind of a pain in the butt and, and you would do it and then basically if you don't sink them, run away. So you have to unseat them. You have to get on the cannon. You have to select the shot, reload it. Now if you have people on your ship, like real live people, it's a different situation because they can just hold a couple of them in their inventory. So then what we're going to do is we're going to tell them to get on it. We're going to go into their inventory and put one in there because that's pretty much all they can hold. And then we'll do the same situation down here. Now we essentially have two shots at this point that we can use to take out pretty much anything. And these will actually damage the brig. So we're going to head straight to the brig and we're going to go right at it. And I'm going to show you what this situation would look like. It's going to damage our ship. This is going to be the last thing I show you because you can have fun with this build. I'm pretty sure I've given you enough information that you can see the uh, practicality of it all and make use of the design. Do your Put your own spin on it and do your own thing. So we're going to go straight at this brig. And then we're going to fire the explosive barrel at it. And then fire a secondary explosive barrel at it. And just blow it to heck. So you essentially want to wait till you're right within range and you're sure you're going to hit it. Right now they're probably starting to fire at you, but at this range it's fine. The cannonballs are going to land on top. They're going to damage the armor. It's not going to be a big deal. We're right at it. Fire the barrels. Fire the barrels. Well, we're going to reload. So right now we're just going to push them. So at this state you'd be pushing, screwing with them. They're going to be firing at you from one side. Especially, it's really good. You can see there, I think we actually destroyed a plank. If uh, they only have guns on one side, you would want to go at the side that does not have guns and continue to push them. They're probably going to, crew's probably going to be firing at you at this point as well. We're going to go spin around and we're going to go at it again. Fire at them. And then uh, there you go. We, you can see we highly damaged some panels. We took out some panels. Now at this point, you would uh, switch to your other 
ammo if you have it and then start firing that or run away and let the bigger ship come in and finish them off. This could be like at the front of your uh, convoy of ships or fleet of ships and uh, it could go in, take the brunt of the damage, put out a bunch of damage on one of the ships and then, uh, you know, get out of there. All right, so I'm, I'm pretty sure I've given you, you know, good ideas, some good explanations of some ways you can use it. It's a really good design. I like it. I'm going to be making use of it in uh, PvP just to see what what all shenanigans we can get away with. Like I said, you can put more cannons on there, but you got to level up the crew on it. And uh, I'm not sure how many more cannons would be useful. Two like this seems to work out really well just running it into the ship. And also, if it's a smaller ship, you're going to get the, the ramming damage of it all as well. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my Lee Crow Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time. Thanks for watching.